Patrick Osborne, congratulations on your Oscar nomination for your animated short film, Pearl. How did it feel when you got the news you'd been nominated? What's that? How did, how did I feel? get the news? Yeah, how did it feel when you got the news? You know, it's, it's, uh, I woke up at, I set an alarm for 5.15 a.m. with the link already open to watch the stream, and um, I knew alphabetically, they do it alphabetically, I knew if I heard a certain film that, that before mine that there was not it wasn't going to happen <laughs> and I, I, I was thrilled because um you know you 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 get so close to something that you don't know you know i think i i just by the time i finish anything a drawing even i'm kind of tired i'm like i don't know if people are gonna like this um but you hope that you run with inspiration in a clear way and you can get other people to help in a way that turns into something that's good that people like so i'm just happy that people get to watch it and um, the fact that it's acknowledged in that way, is, you can never expect, and it's unbelievable, and it's great. Well, you've won an Oscar about two years ago, I think it was, for uh, the short film Feast. So yeah. what was that experience like, winning the Oscar? It's pretty surreal. Uh, you, as an animator, someone who works you know, in a dark room most of your career, uh, <laughs> Uh, to get up in bright lights in front of all those cameras on something you've seen for you know your whole life, ability and uh, and then when you hear the name called, you know all I could think of was like, don't sound like an idiot. Um, your parents are going to be embarrassed. Uh, they're watching and uh, say the nice. I just I'm like just thank the right people. Just don't forget. Supposed to say, um, who really you, know, you want to make sure the people that are involved in it and really made it happen are, are recognized, and uh, that's what I was worried about. So I was just nervous about that, and uh, I think I did fine. And um, you know, the idea that you go from anonymous animator to Oscar winner it changes your life completely. So that you know that thing you, you're only half ready for all the results of that anyway. Um, but it's amazing. It it was really really weird and really interesting and and cool. Well, congratulations again. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Pearl. It's very different uh, stylistically and uh, thematically from Feast. Tell us a little bit about uh, what the film is about. I wanted to make something. Uh, it started as this idea that could be told in 360, that it was like a 360 video. That was the first uh, incarnation. Google Spotlight Stories was uh, approaching artists to do um, whatever they wanted pretty much in 360 and just say you know make something you're passionate about so I thought I wanted to do I liked I liked in feast kind of match cutting through time I thought it'd be cool to do in VR and um, and then we started I started thinking about that and like well if you're gonna match cut if you're gonna cut in VR you're gonna make the audience kind of lose themselves um, unless you have something holding it down so this idea of setting it in the car was the idea of holding down directionality for an audience like they would know where the front and the back was and even through cuts and you could drive a car through space and you could change light and weather so you get the you can get a sense of editorial in a way that people hadn't been able to get in virtual reality films so far so it started like that and then I thought about well if it's in a car it'd be cool to do like a road trip movie like those are great I love almost famous on the road uh, this idea of making something that happens over time, I thought about, uh, I love Shel Silverstein, so I thought, well, maybe it's like the, the automotive version of The Giving Tree, or something like that. Um, and then I started thinking about what, uh, you know, like what else you get, like I got my first car from my parents. So that's, you know, a passion for art. I used to draw with my dad when he was a toy designer. Um, and this idea that you pass on your talent as well, and your passions and your taste as, lo as well as objects. So um, it became that, it became like, um, could we do a music version of that where a, a dad is, is trying to be an artist but has to give it up for his kid and then the kid gets the taste, it gets the talent and, 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 um, and makes it happen on their own in the same automobile. That's kind of the, the start of it. And I think finding a way to make it be about something simple and universal uh, it gets you a lot of leeway. And then we decided we were going to make a film version of it as well because we couldn't really figure out how to do editorial and story in VR. There's no tools for it in your movies. So we planned a, a movie movie and then learned and made VR out for that and vice versa until we had a finished product. About every three weeks we would switch, start working on the other one. 
and kind of use the same assets and flip back and forth. And in the end, I got to like kind of shoot a movie in VR, so like a mini avatar style, you know, like the whole thing's there around you and you just find the cameras and the, for the theatrical version, which I think is a really fun, ridiculously luxurious way to make an animated movie because there's so much waste. But um, by going in and shooting an animated movie at the end. Wow, that's something. Um, so explain a little bit more about um, the, the technical aspects of this for, for people who might not be quite familiar with it. Sure. I mean, it's rendered entirely on a cell phone, which I think that might be an Oscar first as well. Wow. Um, like the entire, the entire film had to run in real time on an iPhone 4. And so it had, to, it had to be simplified in its look and its style enough to uh, render that fast at 60 frames a second so people don't get dizzy when they're watching it on the Google Cardboard. Um, and then we, at the end of the process, we realized that it wouldn't be too much trouble to port it over to Vive, to the high-end headsets. So you can actually watch it in five different ways. You can watch YouTube 360 video, you can watch a rendered 360 experience on your phone, and you can watch the theatrical version, and you can watch it on the, on the Vive, and you can watch it on Google Cardboard. So it's got this kind of uh, mix of, of things that it's, I, I urge people to watch the theatrical and then watch one of the VR ones and just decide for yourself if you like one or the other better. Do kind of lean in different ways and it's interesting to see, it's not often you get to watch a film in two formats and see what you, what you prefer. Right, yeah. With all of this uh, technical, with all the technical aspects to the filmmaking, is it, uh, is it easy for the story to get lost. I mean, in other words, was it a challenge to make sure that the story did not get lost uh, while you were figuring out all this technical stuff? It can be, but I thought of it like theater, mm -hmm. where as long as you have the audio, the color, like the visual design, the sound design, and the music support the story as well, and kind of tell you the story along with the action on screen, that you tend to not miss things. You know, I was worried about that, but it it ended up that like people would look like they're missing something when they're watching it in 360 and they would still catch the story because it's supported in a lot of angles and we kind of spotlight the important stuff. And the, the, the live version, like the game, game engine version, actually waits for you to see important things for a little while. Uh, so it's a, it's a flexible length of time that the film takes. And then in the theatrical version, I'm literally like you normally do in a film just telling you what to see. But uh, yeah, and the, you have to worry about that a little bit, but I think if, as long as the audio is stereo in 360 and works, you, you'll still get the story. Right, I certainly got it. So um, <laughs> uh, let's talk about, uh, from a design standpoint, what you were thinking, color, line, shape, all those different things. Yeah, I mean, I brought on Tuna Bora, who I didn't know at all, I'm just a fan of her artwork. And uh, she's an incredible illustrator. Uh, she normally does uh, editorial work and book illustration and some advertising uh, work. And uh, she came on really early to talk about story. And we were trying to make sure that our color palette uh, kind of reflected at first like a memory. So it's got like a little bit of a uh, Instagrammy color palette, you know, with like a kind of blown out washed purples in the darks. And then it moves through. Um, more contrast in the middle where there's, where there's struggle, and then in the end it goes back to kind of this pleasant, blown out, um, a little bit um, idyllic color palette. And I think that, in addition to the sound, kind of really jumps in there and supports the story. And on the simple blocky character look, that's really, it's half aesthetic choice, because I do like how that looks. I think you connect to when they are abstract and simplified in a way that you don't when they're too real. It's almost like it leaves room for the viewer to put themselves into the image a little bit. But the um, action and stuff of it and of that also Tuna went into and made it kind of, it goes from like 83 to like 95. So if you look at the clothing and the t-shirts, they're all homages to those times, or that expanse of time, uh, which is kind of fun. So I think, you know, what seems a limit, which it needs to run on a cell phone, so it has to be rendered simply, you can actually use to make something that connects to people in a little bit of an abstractly, like a, a way that's pushed away from real and enough that you kind of, you you just let things happen a little easier than if it's real. It's kind of like, the, it's like going away from the uncanny valley of uh, real rendered stuff. Right. 
And the, the song that plays underneath it, did that inspire any images or uh, cuts that you made or how, how did that play into it? Well, we, uh, I, I sent the Pollen Music, the, the uh, group of guys that uh, looked for the song, and I sent them storyboards and a few drawings, and they put out a request to people that they knew to write demos. So 10 demos were written of different songs, original songs, and, I, and it was just like a verse and a chorus, but uh, this one was by Alexis Hart, who happens to be one of the partners, but I didn't know who wrote the songs when I listened to them. Um, they don't want me to be tainted by fandom, because um, some of them are. I'm fans of some of them. Uh, so the idea that you know I'd pick and then he would rewrite a little bit and try to make it uh, story, and then I would see his verses, and I'd say, oh, that if I kind of line that verse up with this part of storytelling, uh, maybe that would resonate in a way that it's not literally. I never want to be like talking about what's on screen, but the difference between the two is kind of uh, it creates a tension that can be interesting. I think that happened for sure, but they were kind of separately done. You know, it was like. He, he wrote the song on the pitch, and then we just combined verses later to make them work. Right. What do you hope people take away from this film when they see it? Um, I think it's nice to think about, you know, for me, it's about what my dad gave me, like this idea of uh, that, that drawing could be a thing in a career, and for her, it's like sitting in the car playing music even though it seems like it's maybe not the best to like take your kid around the country living in your car being playing music that um, you know maybe you maybe some of the unexpected things about raising your kids is that they they absorb more than you, than you think um, and I feel like hopefully people can put themselves into that spot either as the child or as the parent and uh, and, and feel something well Patrick congratulations again on your Oscar nomination and uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat it was a pleasure Thanks. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> you too. Thank you. See you, man.